Good afternoon, all of you. Uh, it's a privilege here. Uh, thanks, Zareen, for inviting us. Uh, I think I, I would like to keep this session a little differently. Uh, on I won't talk too much about either NPCI or UPI. I think there are a lot of people who are already talking about it better than us. So I'll keep it a little differently. And, and I, I would like to touch upon two or three things uh, in this talk. Uh, let me start with the discussion around what sort of made UPI successful, right? Uh, and I think the session, I would like to touch upon a few of the deep tech topics here and how it's impacting us. Uh, so when I look at UPI journey, uh, you know, way back in 16, uh, we used to meet a lot of banks, you know, talk about a lot of our products. And, and it was more about features, what we can do, how this rupee card is better, you know, how are the payments different. And recently we had one session with one of the top banks, private banks. Uh, and it was all about technology. You know, we discussed on infrastructure, automation of infrastructure, blockchain, uh, open source, uh, you know, how, how we can open source a lot of software. Uh, and and I, th I think it was, as a C, Zarin started with a topic saying that she is the CEO of a you know, technology organization. I have seen this shift in the last six years where as an organization, people approach us not for clearing house, but for technology capabilities. Uh, and I think this is, this is a theme that we have been seeing. Uh, and, and more and more, it's, I think people are not talking about Java and standard technologies. They are now talking about the Web3, the blockchain, the AI. Uh, and, and I think that's, that's where I think the conversations has been going. And, and if you come back to the UPI success, I think that's a key part of it. You know, when we design UPI, we obviously designed with the open banking architecture. Uh, you know, why should I depend on my bank for pay, making my bills? You know, why can't I get a better uh, experience, right? But more importantly, UPI on open source helped us to scale and achieve the architecture that, that we have been able to not worry too much on the scalability part of it, you know. Like, Four years back, we were ready with a billion-a-day architecture, and today we are looking at, you know, scaling th that as well. And in the last six years, we have changed the database two times on the both open-source databases on on the platform without a major downtime. So that's that's been the story of UPI. So I think the key point that is emerging when we talk about the payments is is around. I think it's no more about just the features, functionalities you know, making it real time, but how open the architecture is and how, how we are actually going to adopt the new emerging technologies. Uh, and, and I think the next point that I would like to touch upon is, uh, you know, I think there are key three pillars that we are seeing emerging, clearly emerging in the technology world. Uh, the first one is obviously the blockchain Web3 world that I would say. Uh, I think we are internally looking at a lot of use cases coming on, uh, you know, uh, DLT architecture. Most of the payment systems we are moving purely from a efficiencies uh, perspective. But more importantly, I think, you know, we talked about the ONDC, but I think the possibilities that we can look at with payments on on the Web3 world with with like programmability the forex transactions coming on the same platform, settlement happening in real time. I think this is a clear shift that we are seeing where, uh, you know, the, I think we will have a lot of possibilities where ONDC, not just in country, but across countries can happen with, in real time without need for uh, different platforms. We're also seeing a lot of work on the AI front. Uh, we ourselves are working on creating our own uh, AI architecture. Uh, again, a small story, we have been on a Hadoop sort of platform license model. Uh, but today we are completely moved from that architecture into a more open source framework and creating a lot of modules within each of those functions. So I think we are looking at working on solutions like Fling, you know, Superset, and not just worry about, you know, a monolithic architecture that we had in the past. So I, th I think if I look at this, this actually sort of opens up our co-creation abilities as well, uh, where we can maybe work with a lot of fintech partners uh, and see how you know we can collaborate in in this journey of working on a lot of the AI use cases that we are getting. 
we saw what's happening on the chat gpt uh, but can we do that in in the in the banking and payments world is is one question that we are looking at uh, we are we are also looking at uh, uh, like if if i look at the npca journey in the last 6 years you know or uh, 13 years now we started with a very vendor uh, specific products uh, you know lot of the work was was outsourced we had a lot of uh, vendors who were working with us now we are uh, we have slowly moved into a open source model where you know we have a common goals for across all our products you know this is like upi is the same code base that we use for running all our other payment platforms as well but now we are looking at the same common uh, open source for working on various new initiatives like the blockchain ai uh, everything which is completely open source and going a step next step where can i be the contributor and not just be a adopter of the open source that we are uh, working on so how do i become from a just a consumer of open source to a or a, to a contributor to that and think about how do we actually co create i mean today lot of us are like if you ask most of the cisos in the banks they will get scared with the open source softwares right uh, it's it's not secure so but how do i get to that level where i challenge the ecosystem to work with us and and uh, you know create the solutions that are required for all of us uh, i think i fundamentally believe there are three key pillars on which the evolution will happen or revolution will happen at this point uh, obviously the first one is the platforms that we are creating uh, platforms like upi platforms like uh, ondc and i think as a estimate that we are seeing i think at least in the apac region we should have 200 sort of platforms that that we might be having who uh, you know where where we need to work with all of them for various use cases uh, the fintech engine you know is is another core area but again i think we need to look at fintechs which are having that ability to you know really have a deep tech expertise and not just about you know creating a solution which uh, may not be scalable so i think fundamentally we need to look at how do i actually help scale the platform that i have and not worry too much about you know changing any of the levers that that we have uh, i think i think it's it's i think the last part that i would like to highlight in the journey that we have done and and which we are seeing more and more is how do we actually build an architecture which is sort of not depend on any vendor or or a single point of failure sort of model you know we we really need to have various options for each of the solution that we have and should be able to change as we move along uh, in this journey so primarily i think if you look at uh, you know the key message that we are looking at it is i think this change is not going to the 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 pace at which we are having the changes is not going to stop uh, last year we were at about 3 and a half billion today we are about 7 and a half billion so someone asked me last year you know do you expect the same growth that you have seen last year i said no i i don't expect that to happen but here we are today you know i think we i think we had a gradual uh, increase in the growth that we had uh, so i think this change that we are seeing across all our payment platforms uh, you know is is not going to uh, slow down similarly the adoption that we are seeing in the deep tech is 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 going to be really really uh, high uh, so i think we need to get ready i think this is a time where i think a core strategic investments on technology and strategy needs to be adopted uh, and and i think that needs to be sort of followed to the core uh, and and this this could be across areas this is not just a, in payments but i think lot of our as i said lot of our discussions today with banks is on you know how do we improve the overall resilience in the systems how do they uh, quicken the changes that we are doing i think we have done cbdc 2.0 about 3 years back even today we have banks which are which are not up to that right so how do we make these changes agile and create common codes which is sort of reusable is is the key message and as i said you know we need to move beyond and and really look at deep tech adoption that is happening across uh, the ecosystem uh, so with those few words uh, you know thanks for this opportunity i uh, i think it was a great session uh, previous three ones uh, so i hope uh, you know we would be able to continue the momentum and uh, move along on this thank you all thank you, thank you so much sir
I'd like to invite uh, Mr. Ankun Kanwar, uh, Managing Director and Head of Cash Products ASEAN and Global Head of Structured Solutions to hand over a moment to Mr. Vishal Kanwati, please. Thank you.